Angina. Angina pectoris is a clinical symptom of discomfort due to transient myocardial ischemia. It occurs due to coronary artery spasm, coronary artery obstruction and coronary dysfunction. It is characterized by substernal pain or heaviness radiating to both the arms that is the ulna border of the left arm, the jaw, teeth, occiput and the epigastrium. Variations may be seen as gas in the substernal region, breathlessness and fatigue. Let's see the types of angina. The first one is stable angina. This occurs with physical effort and is relieved with rest or nitrates. Aggravating factors include cold weather, smoking, emotional upset, high altitude and sexual intercourse. The second one is unstable angina. This is also called as pre-infarction angina as 20% of these patients develop MI within 4 months. This includes recent angina that is less than 60 days. The symptoms are more severe in frequency, duration and intensity. Angina at rest which lasts for more than 10 minutes and this angina is not relieved by rest or nitrates. The third one is post-infarction angina. Patients develop angina within 2 days to 8 weeks after MI. They require coronary angiography. Then we have Prince metal angina. This is seen during the early hours of morning associated with ST elevation on ECG. Response to nitrates. Beta blockers are contraindicated as they aggravate spasms. Then we have nocturnal angina. This appears in the middle of the night due to left ventricular failure. It is precipitated by dreams causing release of catecholamines, full urinary bladder and transient hypoglycemia. And the sixth type is decubitus angina. It relieves when the patient walks. It is caused by blood volume shift towards lungs and rise in the left ventricle and diastolic pressure. The risk factors of angina include exercise, anemia, tachycardia, hypertension, cold wind, hyperthyroidism, aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation and arrhythmias. Now let's see the assessment of chest pain according to modified Canadian CVS Society criteria. Grade 1 is angina only on strenuous or prolonged exertion. Grade 2 is angina while climbing to plight of stairs. Grade 3 is angina while walking one block on the level. One block is 100 meters and grade 4 is angina at rest. Pathophysiology of angina Imbalance between myocardial oxygen supply and the demand results in myocardial ischemia that is MI. Since oxygen extraction from the coronary artery blood flow at rest normally is high, changes in the oxygen extraction cannot correct imbalance. In stable angina, a fixed reduction in diameter of the coronary blood flow with elevated myocardial demand leads to angina. Clinical features of angina include retrosternal pain, the pain lasts for 20 minutes or more. Characteristics of the pain include squeezing, tightening, heaviness and silent episodes without any symptoms. Investigations include ECG which shows ST segment elevation or depression 
with or without T wave inversion. Exercise testing protocols, stress myocardial perfusion scanning, echocardiography, coronary arteriorradiography. Management for angina, general measures include avoid walking after meals, particularly during cold weather, avoid strenuous exercises and avoid smoking, control hypertension and diabetes mellitus, correct anemia and arrhythmias. Medical management includes nitrates that is glycerin trinitrate, isosorbide trinitrate, isosorbide monotrinitrate, beta blockers like propanolol and labetalol, calcium channel blockers like amlodipine, nifedipine and verapamil, antiplatelet drugs like aspirin. Surgical management for angina includes PTCA that is percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. It is an invasive but non-surgical procedure under fluoroscopy a small balloon tipped catheter is inserted via the femoral artery in a retrograde fashion to the coronary artery and the balloon is inflated. Balloon inflation pressure is measured in pounds per square inch or in atmosphere. The inflation lasts for about 1 to 3 minutes. 